the 12th century, the Chinese were the first to wind excess fishing line onto their rods before unreeling it back into the water. Today's reels are made with lightweight, high-strength materials and have gears to quickly deploy and retrieve the line so you can catch bigger and stronger fish. Or at least try to. Antique reels are heavy and have just one speed. Modern reels have two or more speeds and fewer parts. To make a reel's frame, a computer-guided router cuts four openings in a cylinder made of aluminium. They let the angler access the spool inside the frame to undo any knots in the line. Another cutting machine shapes a stainless steel blank into a spindle, the inner part of the reel around which the fishing line winds. It also carves two pinion gears into the piece. The high gear retrieves the line faster. The low gear gives more power to fight big fish. The machine's cutters are made of carbide, an extremely durable material. Even so, they're changed on a weekly basis. Another cutter carves the reel's main gears, a high speed and a low speed. These main gears interact with the pinion gears to make the spool revolve. This lets the angler wind line back onto the reel. This cutter drills small indentations, part of the reel's drag system which lets the angler adjust the line tension. The next cutter engraves the company name onto one of the reel's two side plates. Yet another cutter engraves the drag settings. One, two, three, four, and strike. Strike lets the angler fight fish weighing up to 900 kilos. The side plates are dipped in a series of chemical baths that bind a gold-colored dye to their surface, a process called anodizing. Now, to assemble the fishing reel, waterproof grease and lubricant are applied to two safety catches that prevent an angler from using too little or too much line tension. A bearing is then added to support the spindle in the spool. A click plate is also installed. This makes a sound when a fish takes the line. A stainless steel spindle sleeve and drag plate are added. As is a sturdy synthetic washer. The spindle and pinion gears are added to the spool. The spool is now ready to go into the frame. A rotating clamp steadies the reel and the stainless steel fixture that attaches the reel to the rod is installed. And the left side plate is attached with six screws. This metal spring and plunger enabled the angler to change speeds from high to low with just the push of a button. A metal clip locks the mechanism in place. A little grease is added to the gearing and the spool is fully assembled. It's inserted into the frame and a harness lug is added. This lug will be attached to a fighting harness warned to prevent a fish from yanking the rod out of the angler's hands. Next, the right side plate is mounted in place. A lever and a knob which will adjust the drag settings are added. The knob is turned clockwise for more tension, anti-clockwise for less. Next comes the installation of the stainless steel and plastic knob used to reel the line in. And finally, the button for switching speeds. The drag lever and the gears are checked to see if they engage properly. The reel is tested at high speed to see if the safety catch prevents what's called free spooling, a glitch that could send 900 meters of line flying wildly out of control. And that's a situation that would leave you reeling.
never slow up. No, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement.